Hello and welcome to Intro to Business Chapter 15, Information Technology. A uh, wonderful chapter, great overview. Um, once again, uh, a bit terminology uh, filled, uh, but of course that's part of uh, sort of doing a survey or an overview, getting to know things. One of the things that's interesting about technology, and really I think of technology as one of those items that is changing uh, much like the law, the economy, the business environment, information technology, and any change creates new business opportunities and of course closes the door uh, on other possibilities. So it's always interesting to be watching new developments and things that are happening and trying to uh, ascertain you know, whether or not they're going to create new employment opportunities or new markets or new business services that could be delivered. And so it's one of the ways that I think about uh, information technology. Some people view uh, information technology or technology in general as sort of an, an ends by itself. And there certainly are uh, business models and businesses that uh, revolve or center around uh, technology ideas. But for the bulk of business, uh, if you're outside of the tech tech field, um, technology is a tool. And so it's um, a resource that's deployed either to create greater efficiencies or to um, streamline processes or to make a business more productive. So it's deployed in a, a variety of different ways. And so how you think about technology might be a little bit different depending upon whether or not you're in the technology business or market space where it's a very um, strategic kind of decision and it's the central piece of your business versus whether or not your technology is deployed in a support role. So um, just some things to think about as we begin uh, the process here. So. There's been a lot going on recently with uh, business analytics, or sometimes people will talk about big data or big data, depending upon how you want to say the word, um, which is this idea that with uh, increased uh, processing power, increased computer and technology utilization, we're starting to have just an immense amount of data available. Everything you and I click or browse or uh, follow on the internet and a variety of things that we may do in a work or school setting uh, captures data and that data is then available to use. Um, I like to think of data as just um, just facts or just X's and O's, just um, statistical types of uh, not even statistical types of information because statistics implies that we've done some processing. It's literally just the raw information or the raw data. Once we get to information, that data is processed in some way uh, to create uh, information or to make it a more useful uh, tool for us. And from the data comes information and then from the information we may be able to get some insights uh, about a variety of things uh, about our business processes uh, one of the big areas is about our customers trying to understand them better so that we can uh, better align our uh, products to suit their needs and so we can go from data to information to insights and then uh, I put on the slide here wisdom uh, which is maybe even something beyond just uh, just insight um, and so this is sort of the, the progression of data or in, or data into information or useful things. I read a recent book, uh, the noise in, or the signal in the noise, which was a nice, uh, read about, uh, the role of big data. And one of the interesting things there is that we are collecting more and more information, but that does not necessarily mean there are more truths in the world. Um, it means that we may discover a few that we don't know already, um, but data can be both a blessing and a curse, I guess, is what I'm getting at here. Um, you can just be inundated with uh, lots more facts, but it's hard to uh, take those facts and turn them into uh, action items that can be monetized or can create revenue for a business. 
So there's many um, nice little graphics in this chapter. Uh, I found them to be particularly um, useful. And so one of the things that will come up um, in the chapter is this idea of information systems. And in this slide, they're talking about information needs. And so they're talking about a, or, uh, looking at a casino here. And uh, so you've got uh, people on the front line that need certain pieces of uh, information. And then you've got managers and then you've got uh, operations people and then you've got uh, uh, presidents who need uh, summary data uh, in order to run and operate a business, determine its priorities and whatnot. And so this is an interesting way to think about your information needs. Uh, the information needs are different. One of the things that you try try to do, I guess, is not overwhelm your people with information. So the kind of information that a president might receive would be very different than the types of information uh, that the people that are the pit bosses in this case might might receive. Not necessarily that we're trying to hide the information or make the information unavailable. It's just there is so much information that it can be overwhelming. Um, and so one of the things that we have to do is we have to filter it to get to what's reasonable for each level of the organization uh, to have available. Speaking of information systems, um, th there are a lot of them. And so these are tools or resources that are designed to capture uh, information. So th the easiest one for, to, for us to think about is an accounting information system. Uh, this could be your general ledger package along with your various uh, subsidiary ledgers and various other uh, components that may plug into your uh, accounting system. They primarily uh, allow you to keep your, your, your books, um, but it may interface with a, uh, a CRM system, which is a customer relationship management system, and it may interface with other systems uh, so that data is both shared or calculated or calculated, uh, compiled so that it is uh, available to different parties within the organization. Uh, a management information system, I mean, it's going to lean on accounting information also, but it's going to uh, include additional information uh, to give you a sense, like say you're a retail store, uh, your accounting information system is going to track your sales, of course, but you may want to know things like how many customers came through the door. And so, you know, many businesses have a counter on the door so that they know uh, what the foot traffic count was like. And so that is uh, just one example of a, a management piece of data. And there may be uh, a whole variety of things, both internal to an organization that management is monitoring, but also things that are external. Um, things like economic conditions and what's going on with the competitors and you know just a whole slew of, of other things that management may find useful as they think about uh, operating and running their business. If you sort of integrate a bunch of those things together, sometimes people will talk about ERP systems, which are enterprise resource planning systems, which is kind of just a, a, a big way of thinking about um, digitizing an entire business all into one kind of system so that more and more information is more readily available. And then GIS systems, uh, another uh, type of uh, information collection system. Here's an example or a picture of an ERP system and you can see that they have a finance, HR, operations, accounting, and marketing. All of those functions of business, which those are the, the you know, some of the main or primary functions that we usually think about are capturing data and then it's going into an ERP system which is then um, you know making it available across the entire organization or to people who need to see the whole picture of what's happening with the organization rather than just what's happening in marketing or what's happening in accounting and I think part of the appeal um, of an ERP system, um, they're generally, I think of them as reserved for very large businesses, but I think part of the appeal is that a lot of these uh, functional areas within a business can operate in a silo and not necessarily communicate well uh, 
between each other and they may not know what's going on in other parts of the organization and so by consolidating the data or the information you start to create a, a situation where uh, more and more people can see the whole as opposed to just the parts data mining um, you know data mining is an interesting idea on the one hand you know some information people will say you should have a hypothesis first uh, you should uh, have a, a course of action based on whether or not that hypothesis is true or not true and then only when you have those things should you go searching for data that then supports or proves or disproves uh, your hypothesis otherwise it is tempting to just be looking at data for the sake of looking at data um, but data mining is this idea of going out and uh, trying to gather more data so that you can turn more data into information so that you can make better business decisions and here they've uh, shown you know with accounting data and uh, customer relation management data usually coming from your CRM uh, software uh, combined with uh, a series of governmental data and then maybe data that you buy from external sources uh, syndicated services would be well I could go to a data mining uh, company and probably say I want all of the uh, people between 30 and 50 who live in um, you know the Lane County metropolitan area that have less than a bachelor's degree because we want to the college wants to market to them um, and so there are companies out there that just collect data and then can slice off a sliver of it usually for marketing efforts but for other purposes they can slice off a sliver of it and you can uh, purchase it from them and so here they've taken all this data and they've put it into their uh, hardware they've done some data transformation it goes into their warehouse and then that allows then uh, for people to query the data uh, to look for ways that they might be able to make uh, improved business decisions so other information systems besides our management information system and our accounting information system uh, you know you can have uh, things that support operations so this might be part of your production or operations process um, transaction processing systems I, I think of the obvious thing that comes to mind here is almost everybody has a, a point-of-sale system now uh, which sits on top of your um, accounting system but a, a point-of-sale system think of a small retailer you know they've got a new computer behind the counter they've got a little handheld scanner that can hit the UPC code and it will help them write their sales transactions but also a big part of that is uh, inventory trend or inventory tracking um, so that's a that is a, a transaction processing system uh, that's sort of uh, specialized to go with your accounting information uh, computer-aided design computer-aided manufacturing I mean there's you, you know certainly things uh, you know robotics um, all these different things that are happening within the manufacturing and the design space uh, lots of tools and technology that can help in those areas uh, in the modern uh, environment and then the chapter goes on from there and just kind of talks about um, I guess for a lack of uh, for lack of better terms they just kind of wrap a few things in so they talk just briefly about artificial intelligence um, you know and within artificial intelligence you've got uh, machine learning and a variety of other things going on I'm gonna set that one aside uh, that's gonna come up again for us in week 10 as we start to think about what the future of business looks like and I think some of the technological developments uh, may shape the way we do things um, and then they local area networks which is just you know computer networks in a small area wide area network you know same idea bigger system it looks like there's a typo here cloud computing and software as a service um, you guys are all probably familiar well of course you're familiar you have a, a Google email now as an LCC uh, student and you have uh, as a result of that 
you have access to spreadsheets, uh, word processing and slides and uh, um, a storage drive that are all in the cloud. And so businesses are also deploying cloud-based solutions, uh, sometimes things as simple as QuickBooks Online, uh, but there are you know, online accounting systems for mid-sized nonprofits, and there are companies that you can outsource your ERP system to, uh, and then you can buy uh, specific software uh, solutions that are in the cloud. Maybe you have, uh, you know, an in-house networked accounting information system, but you have a software-based uh, CRM system. Uh, or a software as a service cloud-based CRM system. And so you can piece these things together in different ways. Uh, some of the advantages to cloud computing, uh, doesn't matter what kind of computer you have, doesn't matter what kind of operating system you're running. Uh, you generally have lower IT uh, costs, less technicians on staff. Uh, but of course you run the risk of having your internet not working or your service provider can be down. Um, and then there are questions about, uh, you know, who owns the data and how you get the data back or make uh, alternative choices in the future that are all part of the sort of the landscape of thinking about uh, where cloud or software as a service might fit into your, your business. So as we uh, deploy more and more technology, uh, we try to get more and more efficiencies uh, and effectiveness out of that technology, but that exposes us to security risks. And most of these, um, you know, we're familiar with. Uh, unfortunately, we've all, uh, you know, we get the bogus emails, we get the links that we're supposed to click on that will be malicious. Uh, you know, you may have had your uh, PC or your desktop computer in the past infected with a variety of viruses. And so, um, you know, they do a nice little overview of these things. I think if you're not uh, familiar with these ideas, it would probably be good to come up to speed. Um, almost anything can house a virus now. So PDF forms, uh, Excel files that have macros, uh, there's just a whole variety of things and so uh, what you do here is you have to be cautious you have to know where things come from uh, you have to keep your antivirus software relatively current um, all of these different things so malicious programs are things that kind of take over your computer or operate in the background uh, viruses create a mess of things uh, spoofing is you know kind of taking over your system uh, denial of service is a little more interesting this is when um, a business is sort of hit with so many, um, so much traffic that it closes down their system. So uh, occasionally when a company has uh, maybe violated their social responsibilities or uh, a particular group finds a business uh, distasteful, um, there may be some kind of a hack that basically shuts down their systems. They just uh, drive so much traffic to it that it it ceases to function or work. Uh, piracy is just you know copying uh, or stealing copies. Uh, you would never do that. Um, and then credit card and password theft. Um, you probably need to think about. Uh, I know I need to think about how to manage all of these passwords that um, you know we have to have one for everything. Everything from your um, insurance providers to your bank accounts to your logins at work to your various email accounts and uh, you know it uh, writing them all on a piece of paper is probably not a great idea so you may want to deploy one of the apps on your phone or there's a you know a variety of different ways to think about and manage your passwords but you definitely want strong passwords uh, that are that are protecting you other ways of protection, um, encryption, which is this idea that when data is transferred from one location to another, uh, say over the web, uh, the data is usually encrypted and then decrypted on the end site. So it's encrypted both ways. Uh, and that's very common, like if you use, uh, it's very common if you have a, an accounting system, but may, you know, certainly most of us don't encrypt our emails. We probably don't encrypt our word files and things like that and so you have to think about these things a little bit and if the data that you are sharing across the web or in a 
in a cyber kind of way is sensitive, then you have to think about much more about your um, your security systems. And so if you have credit card data from customers or if you have social security numbers from customers or social security numbers from vendors, uh, employee information, all of these things uh, you need to protect. And so encryption is one tool that you might use uh, firewalls to protect your uh, systems from being um, penetrated, I guess, by outside uh, sources uh, is something that you might want to deploy. And then making sure that um, you know your cloud-based systems or your software as a service system or other websites that you interface with or acting or are acting with. Um, have appropriate certifications for their information security as well. And I mean, you can do this idea of cybersecurity, you can do just a degree in that. It's such becoming such a big deal. Um, and of course, we really appreciate the, you know, what technology can do for us in terms of efficiency and effectiveness and the way it can uh, transform a business, but it, it, it's not free. It comes with both a monetary cost and then it has some risk exposures that have to be mitigated. Um, so things to things to think about. And that really is the conclusion of the chapter. There's a lot more that we could talk about here, but that is just a very brief overview. If you get a chance uh, to read some articles in this space or to uh, talk with IT professionals, uh, I think that we could all benefit from learning more about this particular area. It is uh, evolving rapidly, and uh, because it's newer, there's not this, you know, 50 years worth of history uh, like there is in a lot of other areas of business where we have a, a, just a lot more depth of information. This is kind of cutting edge. And so I would encourage you to work a little bit to stay current or to stay. Uh, aware of what's happening. So thank you very much for your attention and for uh, joining us uh, for this chapter. And I will um, reach out to you in the next chapter. Hope you have a great week.